Hello everyone and welcome to WGBS TV Live, brought to you by SupermanHomePage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. My name is Steve Eunice. In this, our May 5th, 2020 show, we're going to be covering a range of topics, including some of the animated movies coming out, some details on Superman Man of Tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the latest Supergirl episode. Yes, there was one. We're going to be talking about things that are happening with the comic book world and so much more. We're also going to be turning to you to take your questions and comments on any particular Superman topic you would like to discuss. And to let you know how all that works and how you can get involved in tonight's show, let me introduce you to my co-host, Mr. Michael Bailey. Hello, Mike. Hey, Steve. How's it going today? Oh, well. As I peer through the screen at you, that was kind of, that was, that was really kind of <laughs> creepy. Anyways... We're here tonight on WGBS Live, which is all about Superman, and because of that, we want to hear from the Superman fans that are watching us live on YouTube. So, if we can work that in this week, this is how it works. First up, you're going to need Skype. Use Skype, go to it, search for Superman homepage, message us that you'd like to be on the show. If we don't have a whole lot to talk about, which I think the Lex episode of Supergirl might produce a little bit of conversation tonight... Uh, we will start taking those calls about halfway through the show. Now, a couple of important things about mess about getting in touch with us. One, message us. Don't just call. That can screw things up. And secondly, if you are using an external speaker to watch WGBS Live, please turn that down so that it doesn't interfere with the select delay that we are on. Yes, and for those who are tuning in live via YouTube, we... Uh, ask you to participate in the comments there. Uh, just get involved, type your comments. Michael and I will keep an eye on them as the show goes on, answer any questions you might have over the next hour. And thank you to our sponsors and patrons, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, and Tina Murray. We appreciate your support. Well, Mike, uh, another week in the world of uh, COVID-19 restrictions as we have. Some places are lifting, some people are not, some people sh places shouldn't. Other places are starting to get back on track. How's the Bailey household holding up? Um, uh, kind of the same as last week. The restrictions are lifting even more here in Georgia. Um, you can go bowling, and you can go get your hair did. Uh, you cannot, however, take a tour of the governor's mansion because of safety. Hmm. Anyways. <laughs> uh I don't want to be sticking my hand in any bowling ball that anybody else has had their hands in now. Yeah, the, the, the tail of the tape is really going to be about two weeks from now. Yeah. Uh, when we, we see what happens now that the people... I mean, at work, I'm seeing about a 50-50 split of people wearing masks and people not wearing masks. People wearing gloves, which you really shouldn't do in the first place. Just, just to let that out there uh, for people watching this that are like, you know, I'm just going to wear gloves everywhere I go. Keep in mind, if you don't change those like every five minutes, you're just carrying germs around with you. Um, so it's, you know, the numbers are getting higher, and everyone seems to be wanting it to be over. And uh, I, I'm kind of worried. Justin in the chat asks about a mask. I have to wear a mask all day at work. I did it as like a gag a couple weeks ago. I'm so sick of it. I am so sick of it. For those people who played Spider-Man that kept taking off the mask every five minutes, I totally get where you're coming from. <laughs> yes, indeed. No, I've, I haven't worn a mask uh, through this whole period, just uh, holding my breath a lot. But... Uh... <laughs> We will get just, on. Just picture you just like, it's like, hey, what's that? Oh, Steve passed out again because he was holding his breath. <laughs> it's gone oh, okay. blue. Why is it turning blue? Uh, we will get onto the discussion topics that we have for tonight's show. And we have a bit of animated movie news, uh, which uh, is good because there's no live action movie news. Other mm -hmm. than the fact that we want to wish Henry Cavill a happy birthday, uh, celebrating his birthday today, May 5th. Uh, depending on where you are in the world. It's already May 6th here. But, uh, yeah, happy birthday to Henry Cavill. Uh, uh, wishing him all the best. I uh, hope you have a super birthday, Henry. I'm sure he watches. Absolutely. I'm sure he's probably sheltering in place somewhere, but I, I hope it's a good one for him. Maybe, maybe I'll show more pictures of him and his dog. Mm. That would be great. I would like that. <laughs> 
All right, so, but on the animated movie front, uh, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War is available today, now, digitally. Um, the Blu-ray is still, uh, and DVD combo packs are still um, a little bit away, but uh, I think next middle of next month, or the, yeah, I think it's the 16th or the 6th of June, um, May, June, yeah, so, uh, but the uh, digital version is available now if you uh, want to watch it, download it, um, but uh, they did, DC did release a preview clip, which I will play a bit of now, uh, so uh, check out this preview clip from Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, available on digital download now. You probably think I'm weak. Raven, you're one of the strongest people I know. So, how'd you end up with Kent? You left, and I was alone. I just wanted to end the pain. So there you have it. There's a bit of a clip from Justice League Dark Apocalypse War in which Raven talks about uh, how she ended up with Superman. Uh, interesting look there. I mean, he's obviously very uh, damaged and injured, but uh, what's with the green S? Uh, kryptonite? I don't mm. know. That's, that's, uh, that, that caught me right there at the end. I was just like, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, so uh, oh. interesting Justice League Dark Apocalypse War available now, as I said, for digital download and in the next couple of weeks on Blu-ray DVD combo packs. So uh, head to the Superman homepage to purchase, purchase or pre-order yours. Uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. This will cap off the uh, animated universe uh, continuum, the, the story arcs that we've seen that are based on the New 52 designs. Um, animated movies will continue, as we'll talk about, but uh, this is the end of this kind of continuity. Yeah, um... You know, we've been talking about that a lot over the last couple of weeks because there hasn't been a whole lot else to talk about. <laughs> I guess this, maybe there was a way to say that. That never stopped us from repeating ourselves before. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. I, I'm sure there are people out there that love these movies, and I, and I want them to love these movies, but I'm kind of ready for like the next chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, see where DC can go uh, in the future, especially with everything changing so rapidly. Yes, indeed. And uh, if you're not into those animated movies, um, which uh, I, I think most people are, uh, even if they you know kind of enjoy them or not, uh, they have been watching them. The Lego animated universe continues on, and the uh, DC also released a sneak peek clip from the upcoming Lego DC Shazam Magic and Monsters animated movie. And this is uh, a clip showing uh, Shazam meeting the Justice League for the first time. What a thrill to meet you guys. I hope I didn't get in the way. Not at all. In fact, we're grateful. Mr... Oh, uh, sorry. I'm Shazam. Uh, Shaz what now? Well, Shazbot. Shazam. Excuse me, Shazam. It was pretty courageous of you to leap into danger like that. I know. That's one of my powers, too. Courage of Achilles. I used it just the other day to eat some anchovies. <sighs> How can we be sure? So there you have it, just a very uh, small part of that uh, sneak peek clip that DC released this week, uh, showing Shazam, explaining who he is, introducing himself, and as usual, Batman is sceptical, as you'll see if you watch the remainder of the clip, which you can watch via supermanhomepage.com. Yeah, 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 I, I... Every time I see uh, Shazam in these clips... I'm just reminded of how he's actually one of the better characters to play in the Lego games uh, because he he's a flyer, but he also has a projectile weapon. So uh, it, it, it's kind of fun to play. Uh, he does turn into Billy Batson uh, if you hold down a certain button. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, the animated movie, Lego DC Shazam Magic and Monsters, will be available for digital download starting April 28th. So it's available now and will be released June 16th. 
uh, on Blu-ray, combo pack, and DVD. So a bit of a gap between the digital download and uh, the physical release. It seems to be more common these days than it was before. Mm, it used to be maybe a week or two. Now it seems to be nearly be a whole mm. month, or if not more. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah uh, but I'm sure they want to get as much out there as possible right now yeah, for that's some revenue. So true. So true. So yeah, the uh, Lego DC Shazam Magic and Monsters full length animated film. Uh, now the one that I know you're really interested in and really waiting to see is. The Superman Man of Tomorrow animated movie, which is not based on anything. It's a, a fresh new story. It actually has uh, Clark Kent working as an intern for the Daily Planet and learning on the job how to save the city of Metropolis. And we were given a uh, first look image from Entertainment Weekly uh, showing us uh, the animated style, which has... Um, a very is it Johnny Quick? Is that the animated cartoon I'm thinking? Johnny of? Quest. Johnny Quest. Sorry, uh, look to it. That uh, is an interesting. Uh, I don't mind it. It's fresh. It's different. Yeah, I. It's. I looked at this. I was like, well, that's that's kind of cool. I mean, it, you know, we're not seeing like the rest of the costume, obviously. Mm. Uh, but you know, it's 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 a red S on a blue sh- with a blue shirt and a red cape. Um, kind of wondering why Lex and him are in that shot together and what they're going to do with Lex. The, the more interesting thing is the cast list. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of funny that the guy that played the music meister in the Supergirl episode, uh, or the Flash episode, was it, the, was it a Flash? Yeah, it was an episode of the Flash. That was the musical episode, is now Superman. Yep. So I guess that's a bit of a promotion there's darren chris uh, he is leading the voice cast playing the man of steel uh so yeah an interesting choice uh he gets to play both the villain in live action and the the, the hero in in voice yeah and he's another one of those guys doing the voice that looks like he could actually play the character especially the character they're going for in this one live action yeah because uh, he does he does kind of have like that dark hair and that square jaw so that that, that helps it does indeed and uh, a actor who is no, um, you know, no, well, he's familiar with playing the villain uh, in Heroes. He was mm-hmm. a very uh, nasty villain. Uh, Zachary Quinto is voicing the role of Lex Luthor for this animated film. So uh, I think that's an inspired choice. Yeah, I like that they're really good outside of the usual uh, box with this. It's not like I, I don't want the like the more standard animated voices like Tim Daly or George Newbern mm. uh, or Clancy Brown to not play those characters. I'll take that any any yeah, day of the week, sure. you know, when you, when it's when it's offered. But if you're gonna go with a new kind of series of films kind of bringing in a new voice cast is a good way to kind of shake that up. And Quinto, he's good. He's just good in everything I've ever seen him do. Um, to be fair, I, I, I only saw the first of the Star Trek movies mm-hmm. uh, that he was in because Into Darkness didn't look very good and I just didn't care about Beyond even though everyone tells me it's good that I should see it. Uh, but he was really good. Was it Siler or I think yeah, it was Siler? Siler, yeah, that's the name. He was in Heroes. Yes. And he was just—he was just like the perfect villain. So, if they're going for a Lex, that and from the looks of that image, I'm assuming that's either the not even with your great speed Superman scene, or it's just another scene where Lex is somehow maybe behind everything, but he's still on the side of the angels, or you know, to the public. Mm. That having a an actor that can kind of bring that that lightness and darkness and 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 all that i think it's such a such a good choice for the role indeed and uh we've also got alexandra daddario playing the voice of lois lane and again an actress who could easily play the role in live action (laughs) i was looking at that picture and i was like yeah she looks like lois lane i mean (laughs) Though to be fair, there's a there's a reporter on CNN right now that I'm seeing a lot because I'm watching a lot more CNN that I think looks like a real life Lois Lane. So I guess Lois Lane's just a type at this point. Yeah. Uh, you know, physically, you know, just so. But yeah, that 
looking at her, I was just like, wow, I just went, really, seriously, just just forget the animated film, cast these people in a new movie, a live action movie. <laughs> Indeed. Now, uh, interestingly, uh, well, who's someone who doesn't look like the character he's playing, uh, we have um, Ryan Hurst here playing the role of, oh, actually, no, Lobo. Uh, the main man. No, I was about to say. Uh, yeah, no, actually, he could. Bobo was he like could. A, a member of ZZ Top, definitely. <laughs> I mean. So, uh, yeah, he's playing the main man, Lobo. And then you have Brett Dalton uh, playing the role of Rudy Jones, a.k.a. Parasite. And again, it could easily, definitely be the live action version. Now, somebody uh, this morning on Twitter tagged me into something uh, because apparently the first. The, the, I guess with the digital release of Justice League Apocalypse War, there's the kind of the first look. And one of the things that I that they said was that it looked a lot like American Alien, the the, the miniseries that uh, a certain person wrote. And that made me go... Um, yeah. Uh, mm. Because Lobo was a big part of that at the end. Uh, Lex was a part of it and you know super, Clark was more of not like an out and out reporter so I'm wondering if that if they're not so much adapting that as like using that as a springboard for this uh, in which case now it's a 50-50 shot <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it went from me going wow I'm really excited about this to going I'll watch it <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll go from there I'm not going to hate it I'll I'll hold... sleep before I see it yeah, but, uh, I see. hated American Alien. I know you did. I know you did. Um, yeah, so uh, the rest of the voice cast for this includes Ike Amadi playing uh, Martian Manhunter. You've got Neil Flynn um, playing the role of Jonathan Kent. Bellamy Young as Martha Kent. And uh, this will be released on Blu-ray uh, uh, combo pack. Uh, you can order it, pre-order it now via the link at supermanhomepage.com so uh, this will be released in the summer I think it is of uh, no yeah mm -hmm. the summer yeah of uh, of the American summer anyway so um, <laughs> American summer well it's winter here at the time so that's kind of confusing for us when I they know. say I was, summer I was, release I was, about, I, 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 was, I, was, I was just amused more at American summer like it's worse than other summers <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, uh, so what's that? J uh, August? Is that an August? Is that no, July? August for you guys? June, J June, July, August uh, in the South. September, most of October, and depending on how things are going, November. <laughs> but the weird thing is, is that since you know so many uh, countries around the world and so many states in this country have been kind of shelter in place. Spring has actually stuck around a lot longer than it usually has been for the past couple of years. It's been downright chilly here mm -hmm. uh, on certain days. So, you know, I, I, maybe the Earth needed a breather. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Justin in the chat uh, is complimenting my shirt. Thank you. It is a, it is a, it's a lot looser on me than it used to be, as you can see. Uh, but this is uh, kind of a takeoff of that George Perez cover. Uh, where he had the Superman in the gray and black outfit, so mm. it's one of my favorites. But uh, it's also now serving as a pup tent. So <laughs> that's good. That's a uh, that's a good thing. Uh, it's good. I mean, you can't wear them much anymore. The, the sh I have a lot of shirts that are you know way too big for me now, having bought mm -hmm. them way back. And it's like I put them on, and it's like oh, this is like sw I'm swimming in this. But uh, <laughs> you, you put a you put a jacket over it, and it's you know it doesn't look too bad. Uh, for videos anyway uh, alright well that's um, that's the animated movie side of things we there was a really interesting thing today uh, it kind of just finished not long ago was a live stream of the documentary uh, The Amazing Story of Superman uh, it was uh, live stream and hosted uh, with a Twitter feed a live Twitter feed from Kevin Smith this was the 2006 documentary that came out at the time for Superman Returns and uh, it's available now to watch on YouTube if you missed it. Um, the video is up on our website. And uh, it's, it's a quite well made documentary looking back at the, the history of Superman you know, from in all incarnations. Obviously it's dated now because it doesn't include anything after 2006. But it's well worth having a look at. 
Yeah, if you are unfamiliar with, like, the larger history of Superman, it's a good, like, uh, primer. Uh, I The only problems I have with it are what I problems I have with most documentaries about comic book characters is that they overgeneralize certain things. So I think it gives maybe a somewhat false impression. But if you just, if you want a good, solid history... Uh, that at the time was, you know, basically the first, I guess, almost 70 years of the character. It's a bit heavy on Superman Returns at the end, because uh, it was really promoting that, yeah. but I, I, I still own, I have the standalone DVD that I bought, like, a week or so before Superman Returns came out, and it came with that 14-disc set that, uh, of course, I bought mm -hmm. uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I still put it on, like, in the background when I'm, like, working on stuff that I, but I, you know, just want some noise in the background. It's it's well worth watching if you haven't seen it. Yeah, and uh, if nothing else, I should look to the credits where my name appears twice. Um. <laughs> uh Yeah, I mean, it's not as exciting as seeing you in the <laughs> Superman Returns back matter. That's true. Uh but yeah, you're 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 there. Yeah, reference you're material there. courtesy of Steve Yunus and also as under the acknowledgement. So uh yeah, that was pretty cool. It's uh it's you got me listed on IMDB. <laughs> 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 so that was uh yeah, that was a, a nice a surprise to to find my name uh, at the time listed in the credits. And, and and folks, you can do that too. All you have to do is host a Superman website for over twenty years, and you Simple. too can get. Uh, yeah, it's 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 just it like that. That's right. All right. Uh, well, he was an interesting one. Uh, on I think it was Sunday night. Uh, he. Well, anyway, over the weekend, I posted a trick kind of question, a, a poll on Twitter, uh, on our Twitter account asking, which of the following has not played Superman? And the options were, I'm going to bring up the uh, the graphic here, uh, the options were Brandon Routh, Henry Cavill, Christopher Reeves, or Kirk Allen. Oh. Now look at the <laughs> results there, look at the results. 56% of people went for Kirk Allen. Uh, thankfully, there was still a large number of people who uh, understood that uh, there is no such person as Christopher Reeves, who has played Superman. Obviously, it's Christopher Reeve. Uh, so a trick question there. And I'm wondering if there. the people that voted for Brandon Routh and Henry Cavill did that as like a protest vote. I think so. A few like they just did. never considered them to be Superman. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it kind of raised the topic with me that a lot of people out there who follow Superman homepage on Twitter and probably are kind of surface Superman fans don't know who Kirk Allen is. And you can't blame anybody who's maybe only known Superman for the last 20 years or so, or even a little bit longer. Uh, Kirk Allen was obviously the man who played Superman in the 1948 serial Superman and the 1950 serial uh, Adam Man versus Superman. And so I put up an article all about Kirk Allen, which I'll bring up his uh, graphic, his uh, image for you. Just kind of didn't uh, have that handy, but uh, yeah, Kirk Allen was the man who played Superman in two serials and also appeared as Lois Lane's father in the Superman the movie extended version, if you like, on the uh, pl on the train with the young Lois, um, obviously turning to her mum and saying that she saw, played by Noel Neal, so saying that she saw a man running alongside the train. Yeah, I, you know, it's one of those things where I, I never shame, try to shame anybody for not knowing some aspect of Superman history. Character's been around for 80 years, has been adapted into multiple formats. Uh, movie serials are not really, like, at the forefront of pop culture at the moment. And it, it's usually, for a lot of people, it's kind of more of a, like a trivia question, like you kind of framed it. Yeah. And uh, Kirk Allen, um, I, I, he was interesting. Uh, I, I, I still don't have a firm handle on whether I like his portrayal of Clark Kent and Superman, because uh, they are what they are, and they're in a medium that is not 
Uh, it's it's not even so much. It's like it's not like movies today. It's just like sometimes it's really silly. Uh, though I do recommend watching the serials because you will see every single member of that cast get into a fist fight at some point. Even Perry White is like in a fight, uh, and he handles himself pretty well. Uh, but Kirk Allen, I, I love the story of him auditioning for the part because they started telling him to take off his clothes because they wanted to make sure he had a good physique. But he wasn't sure why they were asking that, so it got kind of uncomfortable. Like this is like, okay, now take your trousers off. Wait a second here. Um, similarly, Steve asked the same question of all the people that review for the for the site, but we uh, we don't talk <laughs> about that because there's pending litigation. But no, uh, he, he it's fun to watch those serials. Mm. They're 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 not meant to be deep explorations of who Superman is. And he delivers what is quite possibly the goofiest this is a job for Superman I have ever heard of any of the actors. And the fact that, as you know, it's dated, obviously, as you say, uh, you know, when Superman goes into action and flies, it's an animated um, Mm -hmm. Superman, obviously, because of special effects not being available back then. uh, And why work, they did some of that, but for the majority of things it's uh, it goes from a live action uh superman to an animated version and it's still well done but obviously for this day and age it's obvious and even for then it would have been obvious but uh still would have been for kids going to the movies seeing these serials before the main feature a thrill yeah gary grossman i think is his name yep is that his name yes gary Gro. i have the book right behind me uh, who wrote Superman serial to serial? For in a fact, second in that there, I thought maybe Gary was right behind you. You were looking for him for a yeah, confirmation. Just, no, I, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just like, Gary, are you back there? <laughs> Clean up. No, um, he he talks. In fact, in the uh, the documentary you talked about before, he talks about that as a kid he was really disappointed because he really wanted to see Superman fly, and then it's like he takes off and it's a and it's a cartoon. Uh, because it, it, not only were the special effects primitive, apparently when they tried to do it, like Kurt Allen uh, talked about this in an interview, the way he had to hold himself, he lost like 12 pounds of water weight uh, just because it was so hard for him to do. So, uh, yeah, it's just like, yeah, I'm not saying nowadays they just, you know, like tap at a computer and make it happen, but it's a, it's, a, it's a, at least it's a little more easy these days yeah so uh that's uh kirk allen if you don't know who he is you can buy the dvd of the serials uh, they are available on amazon head to our website for the kirk allen article films first superman and get a little bit of a history on uh, on kirk and uh sadly he did pass away at age 88 um uh, quite a while ago now but uh he was uh very much for a while, they're typecast, and then in you know throughout the nineteen seventies, with Superman kind of on a resurgence, uh, started doing conventions and appearances, and it started to pay off for him, having played Superman back in the day. So uh, yeah, learn more about Kirk Allen at our website. All right, we're at the halfway point of tonight's show. Uh, I believe there was some streaming issues. Uh, glad to see we're back all uh, together now, uh, watching again. Uh, We'll take a quick break, play some commercials, and then come back on the flip side to talk to Michael about Supergirl, the latest episode that aired on Sunday night. Back more right after these messages. Don't go away. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. Supermanhomepage.com, covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. Supermanhomepage.com, for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Man of Steel and more. Supermanhomepage.com 
Thanks, Superman homepage, for all the support over the years. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm Matt Balmer, I'm the voice of Superman and Superman Unbound, and this is the Superman homepage. Right here on Superman homepage. Dangerous. First, never touch any appliance without apparent supervision, and always be careful with kitchen appliances. Keep their cords out of your way and your fingers out of their way. Also, always turn pot handles in, away from the edge of the stove. So nobody bumps into them and gets hurt. Now you're cooking. And we're back on WGBS TV live, where Superman is giving a bit of a safety tip there about uh, cooking. And let's face it, a lot of people are doing some extra cooking and experimenting and baking at home at the moment. Yeah, I've um, we haven't tried anything like really new, but man, are we eating in a lot? Um, just because we don't, it's not like I don't want to support the local economy, but it still makes me feel a little squeamish. Uh, getting food from made by other people right now, so Fair so enough. there's a lot of there, there's a lot a lot of cooking going on. All right, well let's uh, get into the Supergirl episode which aired on Saturday Sunday night there in the US and last night here in Australia. It was titled Deuce Lex Machina, a uh, very Lex centric episode and directed for the first time by Melissa Benoist, who I thought did uh, a fantastic job. Um, obviously having John Cryer as the main uh, person in your script is uh, going to go a long way towards helping you uh, because he's such an accomplished actor and uh, knows his stuff. But um, you gave this episode a 4 out of 5 rating in your mm -hmm. review on the website. Uh, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, I thought uh, there was a lot of exposition, as you mentioned in your review. But it, I, it, like I didn't get lost at all. I didn't think it was too much talking. I didn't think there was too much explanation. I just thought it was quite a contrived, you know, Lex Luthor, very much, you know, three steps ahead of everybody else, um, you know, typical episode. Yeah, it, 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 the thing that really saved it from being just, uh, here's how everything happened in the background, kids, mm. was the fact that we were watching Lex fight against his own nature. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he he really just wants to kill super people. Uh, and he got so lost in that. This is a, this has had a very Jeff Johnsian feeling to it, uh, to Lex's uh, personality and his motivations. Uh, I, I thought, like last year when they did the Lex episode, the way they weaved the pat the last few episodes and certain events that happened in there into the narrative and it's just like it was all Lex uh, was behind everything from you know j even the most simplest thing to he's the one that had Jeremiah killed uh, and made Eve test by and manipulated Eve into doing it and boy was she good in this episode I I was I am always impressed with that woman and her performance. Yeah, uh, she's uh, what's uh, what's her name? Uh, Andrea Brooks. Uh, yeah. yeah, she can play the doting, you know, loving kind of you know uh, skittish type of uh, performance, and then she can play the you know evil, dastardly. She she she's got a very good range in her uh, in her repertoire. And they have really good chemistry together too. Uh, I, I think that, and actually, Cryer has good chemistry with everybody on yeah. that show. I've, I've I've not seen you know. It was great seeing Lillian again. I like I like her. I like Brenda Strong as a performer. Um, so and and I liked her, like just not even being phased that there was a crisis and the multiverse was wiped out. She's just like yeah, whatever. Let let's move on. And her really trying to keep Lex in line, mm. you know trying to you know keep him from being I thought I thought the Lena stuff was a little you know, that didn't last very long um, but I'm wondering if that's kind of setting up her realize her eventually realizing what's going on yeah uh, John's asking some questions in the comments he said uh, did John Cryer play another character as a bartender that was Lex pretending to be a bartender uh, to you know, move along his plans to get inside that the head of that uh, that particular gentleman, and uh, 
yeah, it was it was funny seeing him in that long wig. <laughs> the the really funny thing was one of the commercials, uh, since we still have cable for the moment, that they showed was for right after Supergirl they play Two and a Half Men. Yeah. And it was apparently in an episode he dressed as Ducky from Pretty in Pink, and I was just like, oh, well, I'm just seeing John Cryer in all kinds of outfits tonight. Very good. <laughs> Uh, John also asked, how did Lex know about Jeremiah if he wasn't in the earlier seasons? Well, everyone knows who Kara's parents are. You don't have to have been around to be able to investigate and discover who her parents are. So uh, that's uh, that big a leap. And uh, he also asked, um, why won't Lena let anyone else use Myriad other than herself? Well, that's not what she was angry about. It was that Supergirl took Myriad off her and kept it in the fortress because of what Lena had planned to do with it. And the fact mm-hmm. now that Supergirl was using that was like, well, you're a hypocrite. You said that it shouldn't be used, and now here you are using it for your own reasons. Yeah, and, you know, there, there's... It, it was a good manipulation on Lex's part. And I think, to a certain extent, that's one of the few things about the episode that kind of bugged me is that it seems like, now, it could completely change at the end, but it seems like if Leviathan is brought down, it's going to be mostly because of Lex mm. and not because of the title character. Yeah. Uh, which, again, is a very Jeff Johnsian move uh, to do. But it was... I, I was just shocked because this was a... Um, this is a pretty straight-ahead uh, episode, a lot of uh, intrigue, and then at the end, uh, a Sun Eater yeah, just that, gets loose. So explain to everyone, what is a Sun Eater? So a Sun Eater is, well, it's, it's kind of self-explanatory, but in the comics, the Sun Eater was a creature that first popped up in the Legion of Superheroes and actually led to the death of a character named Pharaoh Lad. Uh, because they were going to try to detonate this bomb in the middle of it, and Superboy was going to sacrifice himself to do it. Feral Lad's like, no, you're too important to the future. So it was this big thing. It was one of the first Legionnaires to die. And Grant Morrison kind of brought it back during All-Star Superman uh, in that series, and they had a little baby Sun Eater in the... Uh, in the fortress, and that's kind of where this came from. There's a lot of Grant Morrison's Fortress of Solitude uh, on this show, uh, so but it was it was just kind of neat that you know not only did you get to see Supergirl all armored up again, okay, yeah. I, I guess we really don't want to show uh, Melissa in the costume at this point, uh, but you also had Martian Manhunter and Miss Martian. Uh, making an appearance, so it was it, it was like it was like old home week, really, mm. with everybody they pulled in. And John's also last question was uh, how did uh, Lex have the footage of um, Eve killing Jeremiah if it wasn't shown on camera? Well, it doesn't have to be shown for someone to be able to actually have it recorded. Lex has his men everywhere and has you know spies everywhere, so. Uh, while we didn't see it ourselves, uh, she killed him off camera, as far as off our camera. Uh, but obviously, Lex uh, had his own uh, trickery there and uh, has that now as blackmail uh, to be able to hold over Eve. I mean, even a friendship like Eve's is something he can't hold because uh, he's just so much his own person that friendships are not something that he has in his interests. Yeah, he he said it. He was just like, you know, in in the other reality, my relationship with you is probably one of the reasons why I was brought down, so I'm not going to make that mistake Mm. again. Which which was actually genuinely sad, because I felt bad for the murdering person in in, in a weird way. It was like, that that was a really good manipulation of his emotions. Good good job. She's going to kill you. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And... People in the comments asking say about Supergirl letting the Sun Eater out. She didn't let the Sun Eater out. It was the fact that there was um, a white Martian. A white, yeah, a white Martian that was uh, invisible, who uh, caught uh, the trip along with Lena into you know made the trip with Lena to the fortress, and then uh, secretly opened up the door that the Sun Eater was hidden inside of, uh, or had been trapped or caged in 
Uh, and so it wasn't Supergirl's fault. She wasn't the one who let it out. It was uh, well, really Lena's fault for making the trip there, that like Lex planned, and the White Martian followed her along. Yeah, it, it, the thing I like most about the episode is that while it was explaining a lot of information to you, it didn't really hit you over the head with things as they were happening. Like when he shows the picture of the Enforcer that Eve is going to kill, I was like, wait a second, and I, and I had to rewind it. I was like, was that Dean Cain? That was Dean Cain. Oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, and, you know, and eventually he reveals it, but it's not like at the time, you know, they, they, they didn't like hang too much of a lantern on it. So if you're paying attention, it works, and if you're not, it's still explained later in the episode. Hmm. And uh, Miss Martian reappearing uh, mm -hmm. was an interesting one. Uh, I don't know if she'll have any further role to play in upcoming episodes, but you wouldn't think that they'd just bring her back for a five, ten minute stint and that's it. Yeah, I, excuse me, apparently I'm going through puberty again. Um, yeah, Steve, that's, that's, that sure is a good point. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm in a weird mood tonight. No, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping maybe she'll stick around for the finale. Mm. Uh, and, and it would actually kind of make sense because then you have more, like, super-powered people um, to kind of fight against what Leviathan is. And when Gemma, or Gemma, or whatever her name is, like, went full tech goddess, that was kind of creepy. It's very super go, uh, Superman 3. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, did that scar me as a child. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought of when she went all metal platey thing on. Yeah, I I didn't think of it until you just mentioned it, but now it's all I'm going to ever be able to think <laughs> of with her. All right. Well, we look ahead to next week's or this coming week's episode. Uh, we've got uh, an episode titled "The Missing Link," and Supergirl and the team go head to head against Rama Khan and Leviathan. Meanwhile, Lena and Lex must join forces when Project Non Nasir fails leaving the two siblings in serious danger. Here's the promo. I came here to give you a second chance to destroy the supers. I have reason to believe that Lex has been working with a Viking. <laughs> what makes Supergirl's life miserable? Where there is smoke, there's a Luther. Supergirl, new episode next Sunday at 9, 8 central, only on The CW. So there you have it, uh, Mitch Pelegi back in uh, the role of Rama Khan, uh, Leviathan going, uh, teaming up with him, uh, Lex still doing his nefarious things in the background, playing both sides, should be interesting. Yeah, because we only have two more episodes, don't we? I think 19, 18 and 19? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So okay. uh, May 17th is the finale. It, it's it's just so funny that I have you know I'm, I'm still obviously watching Supergirl because I review it for the site and we're, we talk about it on this show but I've just completely lost all interest in the other DC shows not because they're bad but just because the world is terrible and it's just one of those things where I was really interested and then it's just like eh, I, I guess I can kind of forget about it for a little while but I can always go back and watch it all right, well, that's the TV side of things. Uh, Melissa Benoist, as we said, directed that episode uh, on Sunday. She had an interview with uh, EW.com uh, in which she spoke about how you know, she was frightened. Obviously, it's pretty scary going from being in front of the camera to behind the camera and being in control of things. But as I said, having John Cryer there uh, to work with, obviously, uh, put her mind at ease. And uh, I guess everyone knows her there, so it's not like she's stepping into a show that she's unfamiliar with. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I guess it also shows that the cast is still pretty close because, you know, it's like, oh, God, now she's going to boss us around. <laughs> so well done to Melissa. All right, well, let's uh, look to the comic book side of things. And for the longest time, uh, Wednesdays has been known as New Comic Book Day. But uh, in a uh, announcement to comic book retailers this week, DC explained that Tuesdays, and now the new on-sale date for comic books, uh, which kind of brings the comic book world in line with bookstores, uh, with novels and other books always being released on a Tuesday. Uh, does this affect the comic book world 
in a major way. I know Wednesdays have always been a big thing, going to the store on Wednesdays and picking up your new comics. In this new world of digital and everything like that, is it a big deal? Well, here's the thing. that So throughout like the 21st century, Wednesday has been New Comic Book Day, but for like the first 20 or so years of comic books stores being, you know, like specialty stores being in existence, different publishers dropped on different days. Mm. Uh, that's why if you look back, November 18th, 1992 is not a Wednesday. It was, uh, I believe, either a Thursday or a Friday. Uh, and that, you know, the day Superman number, number 75, 75 came yeah. out. So the Wednesday thing was more, uh, I don't know exactly when it started, but it was probably after Diamond started distributing Marvel again, after Heroes World imploded. And I think since Diamond was pretty much the only game in town, Wednesday became the day that they dropped the new books. Uh, and so for a long time, but because so many people came into comic book stores At that in time. the 21st century, it always, se it seems like, well, that was always the way it was. Mm. So it, it changing is interesting, um, but it actually might be better for specialty stores in a weird way. Having Wednesday be your one drop day yeah, it, it, it creates, like, especially the people that want to be there when the books get there, but maybe having different publishers drop on different days. I'll have to talk to, to, to the guy that owns the comic shop I go to uh, to see what he thinks of it. But yeah, because it, it, that's an interesting development. It would now bring people into the stores other than just Wednesday and maybe the weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was one of those people who really couldn't get to the comic book store when I was buying them physically other than on a Saturday or a Sunday because, you know, work and what have you. I would just go on the weekend to pick up my comics. So, But I know a lot of people went on Wednesday because the comic books dropped and they wanted to be there the first and get it, you know, on the day. So I imagine Wednesdays and the weekends were probably the biggest, you know, money spinners. But now that comic books are released on different days, that might help bring people into the stores other than on those days, so maybe it's kind of spread things out for them and maybe help. But then digitally, DC are releasing books pretty much every day of the week now, so uh, it's a seven-day <laughs> kind of... Well, they are. They've got a whole process now where, you know, Monday is uh, the new Man of Tomorrow Superman book, and then there's other books, and Saturday is DC Superhero Girls, and so it really is uh, an everyday event for new digital comic books, so um, it kind of spread things out a bit. Yeah, I... Again, that kind of um, that's that's a good way to keep people's interest through the week, mm. especially if you're buying all of those books, and it gives you a new thing to read every day. I think with digital, that's actually a better uh, model to have because I don't know about you, but sometimes when I buy a bunch of like if I buy like three or four digital books to read they're easier to not get to that day and then suddenly you realize you've never read them. Now, thankfully, it's not like a physical comic book and it's like stacking up on the shelf. But if you have something every day, it's kind of like a TV show at that point mm. where it's like, ooh, Monday I'm going to read my Superman story. Friday I'm going to read my Aquaman story. So that, that's actually really cool. Yeah, uh, Anthony's confused. Uh, it's a Tuesday release in the U.S., which being that we're... Um, ahead is a Wednesday for us because comics used to come out on Thursdays here really for us because that's a Wednesday in the US um, so yeah it's Tuesdays in the US is a new on sale date for um, comic book retailers there and um, Diamond is still going to be re doing their distributions for a Wednesday release so but so people have the choice now. Comic book retailers, whether they're using the new Luna or the new or UCS for um, their distribution house, have a choice. But you are allowed to now put your comics on a sale, on sale date of Tuesday if you have them in. So Mike Zumo is yelling at me in the in the chat that November eighteenth was a Wednesday. I think the reason why I'm forgetting that or getting that wrong is. For whatever reason, the article that came out in my local paper 
and when Death of Superman happened, came out on a Saturday. Mm. So I always associated that it came out on a Friday. Okay. So I could be completely wrong about that. I have been wrong in the past. Mr. Zumo, who apparently didn't want to be part of the whole uh, uh, super secret soundbite, even though it was like tailor made for him last month. So I'm just going to keep saying that. <laughs> All right, so let's look ahead uh, to this week to see what is available. And f there is a trade paperback coming out this week that Superman fans might be interested in, and that is Young Justice Gem World. Uh, so Young Justice Volume One Gem World trade paperback. That's the the comic book cover there. Um, also out this week, as I said, Superman Man of Tomorrow is available now. Monday, May fourth, it was released digitally. And DC Superhero Girls Infinite Frenemies number three will be released digitally on Saturday, May 9th. And you can check out some promo pages and preview pages for those two digital comic books up on our website as we speak. Woohoo! But uh, looking ahead, uh, DC also announced further scheduled books coming out in May. Uh, so this is if you are a physical digital, sorry, a physical comic book reader. This is what you're looking forward to. Next week, next Tuesday, May 12th, Justice League number 44 will be released. And then, as will Lois Lane at number 10. The following week, Tuesday, May 19th, we have Deceased Unkillables number 3, the third of uh, the three-issue series. Superman's Pal Jimmy Olsen number 10. And Year of the Villain Hell Arisen number 3, third printing. The following week, so the last week of May, May 26th, Tuesday, May 26th, will be Justice League number 45 and Superman Volume 3, The Truth Revealed. So some actual physical comics comics for Superman fans. I know there was some released this week, some physical comic books, but nothing Superman related was released this week. But uh, next week, Tuesday, will be the week that you'll be able to physically have some new Superman related comic books in your hand. Yeah, it's... We're, we're, we're in a new world, and it's going to be really interesting to see where everything kind of falls um, after, after, if it ever ends. <laughs> if it ever I ends. I say that because, because for the past, like, four years, like, time has been, and, and this is all perception, I realize, but time has been, like, it's just, like, suddenly it's May, suddenly it's August, suddenly it's December. It's only May, and March feels like 16 years ago. Uh, it's just so, so weird that this has just brought, you know, everything kind of, everything kind of just slowed down, uh, which may or may not be a good thing, but still, it's, wow. It's, it's, I, I think it's getting to me, Steve. I really do. I, I think I'm starting to crack. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I think a lot of people are. It's kind of, it is just weird. Like time seems to have frozen. Yeah, we can't even figure out what day of the week it is sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so you know, one day seems to blend in to another. But uh, let's let's have a look elsewhere in the world of Superman. We've got some uh, collectibles that fans might uh, like to check out. Uh, these are some uh, Superman baseball. I'm trying to show them up here. Uh, what we have here is a baseball bobblehead. You can get them in uh, your team of preference. Uh, I've shown here the uh, Kansas team, um, the Royal Royals, uh, Kansas City Royals, uh, and this is available, as I said, in all different baseball teams. Uh, it's a bobblehead. Uh, I'm not a baseball fan myself, uh, but... Uh, Pretty much, you can do anything with Superman these days, apparently. Yeah, he, he does kind of look like, did anybody lose this? <laughs> I found a baseball in the parking lot. Did anybody find it? Really? Okay, I'll go give it to Lost and Found. Uh, it's approximately 11 inches tall. Uh, it's There's not a toy. Individually numbered, uh, out one out, it's out of 2020, odd number. Uh, officially licensed. And available from foco.com for $35 US, and you can order them through the link at supermanhomepage.com if you're a baseball fan and a Superman fan. 
I wonder if this is kind of upsetting to baseball fans because it's just reminding them that there's not a season this year. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Interestingly, (laughs) in uh, Justice League, when Clark goes back to the farm after waking up from the dead, he's wearing a Royals T-shirt during that uh, that scene when he, you know, finally puts a shirt on. Which is amazing because Kansas City is in Missouri. Yeah. Uh, So. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, obviously, somebody. In... I know he had the universe. I know, I know he had the college shirt uh, in Man of Steel. Didn't uh, Trump make that uh, mistake with one of your states where he thought it was? In a... Yeah, it's, well, yeah. <laughs> Didn't Trump make that mistake? The answer is one hundred percent yes all the time. <laughs> all right, so that's uh, baseball bobbleheads, and there's also a, a backpack coming out if you're uh, a fan uh, that needs a bag. Uh, Lounge Flyers announced the upcoming release of their uh, Superman Shield and Stars nylon backpack. Uh, I'm trying to find the uh, the graphic for it here, so you can uh, have a look at it. Uh, sorry, I just haven't. Uh, here we go. Uh, we've got a backpack. There it is. Put it over Michael's face, right there. Uh, it's uh, no, in- yeah, sure. <laughs> it's fifty dollars. <laughs> Fifty dollars US. Uh, it uh, features zip top, front pocket. Yeah, talking backpack, uh, handle, adjustable straps. Uh, as I said, uh, fifty dollars US. You can get it through the Superman homepage uh, through EntertainmentEarth.com. Yeah, Tina in the in the chat says that she's an Atlanta Braves fan, which makes perfect sense because she doesn't live in Atlanta, and most people who are Atlanta Braves fans are not from Atlanta because Atlanta is a terrible town for supporting its. Uh, home team. <laughs> okay. Well, you would know. Yeah. Also, Just an observation. yeah, don't forget the Super Trivia Quiz has been updated for another month. And quickly, the three questions we're asking you this time around are Who voices the role of Superman in the Lego DC animated movies? And I am aware now that there are more than one person who has voiced the role of Superman in the Lego animated movies. So, uh, any of the people who you think has voiced him would be a correct answer. Who voiced the role of Lois Lane in Superman the Animated Series? And who voiced the role of Lex Luthor in the animated movie Superman Brainiac Attacks? Uh, I know not many people want to remember that one, so they may have forgotten who actually uh, voiced that role. But get involved with the Super Trivia Quiz. It's up on supermanhomepage.com under the Favourites menu. And that pretty much brings us to the end of tonight's show. Before we do sign off, I want to thank everyone for watching WGBS TV Live. Uh, I want to thank everyone in the YouTube comments uh, for your participation in the show. And thank you to you, my co-host, Mr. Michael Bailey. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure as always, Steve. And thank you to our sponsors and patrons, Douglas Meacham, Tina Murray, and John Patrick Van Pelt. And if you want to support the Superman homepage... Uh, You can do so for as little as $1. Just simply head to patreon.com slash superman homepage. Now, the complete one hour video of tonight's show will remain available on the Superman homepage website and our YouTube channel. If you uh, tuned in late, missed part of the show, want to watch it all back in full, you can do that uh, at either of those two locations. But Michael and I will be back next week on Tuesday, May 12th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time for another edition of WGBS TV Live. We look forward to talking with you then. Until then, be sure to check out supermanhomepage.com for all your daily news updates on everything surrounding the Man of Steel. I'm Steve Eunice. On behalf of myself and Michael Bailey, thanks for watching WGBS-TV Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com.